Hello, I'm Gale of Waterdeep. You sent for a magic tutor, I believe. Good. Glad I'm in the right place. Truth be told, I forgot I was still registered at the agency. They haven't sent any assignments my way for quite a while. Not exactly the sort of work I'm looking for anymore, but I've checked the contract and it is, unfortunately for me, watertight. I have to give at least a month's notice to cancel when a job is assigned. Ah well, we live and learn. Good to meet you. Yes, forgive me, you're quite right. Admitting that one doesn't want to be here is perhaps not the best way to start a good working relationship. We could try again if you like. Hello, I'm Gale of Waterdeep and I am thrilled to be here. Was that convincing? No? Well, good thing I'm a wizard and not a bard. Shall I come in? Good. Ah, <clears throat> well then, let's not beat about the bush. Where's the child I'll be tutoring? And what do they need my guidance with? Falling behind on their homework, are they? In trouble at school? I've heard it all, let me tell you. Oh, I'm here to teach you? Hmm, unusual. Very unusual. And perhaps, yes, quite a relief. Oh, gods, have you ever met a child? The noise, and the smells, and the mess. No, this is much more like it. I feel like we're already getting off to a much better start than I normally would, merely by your not being ten years old. So, how can I help? What might someone at your stage of life need with a magic tutor like me? I'm not sure whether I should expect something more interesting than what I'd teach a kid, or less. Well, you could be an adventurer who is secretly using the tutor agency to find a powerful wizard with whom you might delve dungeons deep in search of riches beyond both our wildest dreams. On the other hand, perhaps you just need to learn how to press the digitate to help a bit with the housework. In truth, I'm not sure how those outside of academia use their magic. Did you attend an academy of any kind? No. I see. I went to Blackstaff myself. Have you heard of it? Possibly not, but let me assure you, that name means that you are in most excellent hands. You couldn't hope for a more qualified teacher. A more enthusiastic one, perhaps, but qualifications not lacking. Oh, you have. Good. Then you know what it means. Glad not to have to explain myself too much. Curious that you have heard of it. While it is of some considerable renown within magical circles, without them it is not so well known. How did you hear of it? I see. That was brave of you. Not many people would apply for an academy like that as an adult. For better or for worse, they tend only to take those who show interest in a certain level of aptitude at a young age. I assume, based on your hiring me, that they didn't accept you? How unfortunate. For them, that is. I'm sure they're missing out tremendously on a gifted spellcaster. Or perhaps not. I wouldn't want you to overestimate your abilities. Doing so can rather get in the way of effective learning, I find. Well, I suppose we'll find out. That's the very purpose of our meeting, after all. Now, I fear we have been prattling on and wasting quite a few minutes of our lesson time. I'm afraid I don't do overtime. Once we reach the end, I'll be off. I have important matters to attend to back at my tower. So, let's crack on. Have you anything in particular you'd like to work towards? Or is a general aptitude in all things magical your goal? I appreciate that. Admiring magic for magic's sake isn't something that many have much of a taste for, but it is something I happily indulge in from time to time. In that case, let's start with the basics and go from there. We'll start with presti- Yes, prestidigitation. 
Exactly. You've been reading up before your first lesson, I take it. That's good to see. It can be worth having a thorough understanding of the theory before you try casting anything on your own. Can I assume, then, that having read up on it, you're already familiar with the gestures and incantation for this cantrip? Excellent. Then all we need to do now is apply some brain power and get that weave sculpted. Prestidigitation isn't difficult relative to other spells, but successfully casting any kind of magic is beyond the reach of many, especially those who've only begun learning after they've reached adulthood. After all, if you've never had any contact with the weave until now, establishing rapport with it so that you may command it to do your bidding is no mean feat, even if your bidding is simply cleaning a dirty shirt or lighting a candle. Indeed, let's get right to it. So, while performing the gesture and incantation, which you already know, well done again for that, simply focus on what you'd like the weave to do for you. We'll try without a focus first, that is, a wand or a staff or something like that. Press the digitation is a good one to try with just your hands. Oh, I like a good staff myself. We'll get into the matter of finding a good focus for you later, though. For now, see that candle on the table there? Conveniently unlit as it is, focus your mind on that candle flaring to life. As you do so, clear your mind of all else. Let the thought of that candle, with its merrily dancing flame, fill your whole mind. Once it's filled your mind, let it spill over the edges a little. Imagine a cup of water, full to the brim. One more drop, and the water spills over. That's where we find the weave. Controlling and making use of that water, as it spills over the edge of the cup, is our objective. Of course, this doesn't describe the weave in a real sense, only in a metaphorical one that I find aids novice casters, but we'll cover that later. Now, get focusing on the candle. Give me a nod when you feel your mind is sufficiently clear of all other thoughts. Okay. Good. Now, perform that gesture, utter the incantation, and then be prepared to do that many dozens of times until... Oh, ho, ho. hmm. Okay, then. A successful casting. And on your very first attempt. That is... Hmm. Well, impressive. I can only say that is impressive. Look at that. That little candle is roaring away. Outstanding, truly. Are you sure this is your first time? Well, if it really is, then colour me impressed. Truthfully, I always dread the first few lessons. Watching someone try and fail to perform the most basic cantrip over and over again gets old very quickly, let me tell you. This is... well, this is a lovely surprise. Actually, do it one more time. You know, to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Let's see, what could we do? You could clean something, perhaps. Shame this room is already so clean and tidy. Hmm. There's what? There's... Oh. <sighs> I must have spilled a little on my robes on the way out of the door. Well, I suppose that will do the trick. Not too sure I feel great about being the target of a novice's spell, but... Ah, what harm could you do, really? Let's give it a try. Just the same as before. Focus on your goal. A nice, clean robe. Let it fill your mind. Overflow just a little. And then... <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. Well done, you. Oh, having a student who picks things up so quickly is wonderful. I feel like you barely need my help. We'll do another couple of cantrips. Slightly trickier ones, perhaps. But I wouldn't be surprised if you were casting real spells before the end of this lesson. Stuff that will require real effort and put your connection with the weave to the test. I think perhaps next we should try... I've really never seen such a competent casting of Minor Illusion from any other student of mine. Granted, I've only taught a few people before you, and you're the first one who's not a kid. But still, this is really impressive. And... Gods, is that the time? 
Yes, golly, I've been here half an hour longer than I meant to. I really got drawn into all of this. Uh, we'll have to end it there, I'm afraid. I need to get back to my tower. Oh, no, I think I must thank you rather than you thanking me. Thank you for a most enjoyable lesson. This has been a very pleasant surprise. Hmm. In truth, if this had been like any of my other lessons, I'd most likely send a message to the agency to ask them to take me off their list as soon as I got home. But in this case, I most certainly won't be. I'm even looking forward to what you have in store for me next, and to seeing you again in general. Oh yes, I hope you don't mind me saying, but by my estimation, you're not only an excellent magic student, but good company to boot. This has been a super way to spend two hours, or rather, two and a half hours, as it ended up being. I'm glad you think so too. So, same time next week then. Although, actually, hmm, now I think about it, it would be such a shame to ruin your momentum with a week-long break. Certainly you could practice on your own during that period, but, well, my schedule over the next week is actually quite free compared to normal, so perhaps we could see each other again sooner than next week. I was thinking perhaps tomorrow, if that's not too soon for you. Oh, no, I see from your expression that it may be. The day after, then. I don't mean to seem over-eager, but I think we... I think you really have something good here, and it would be a shame to waste time when you could be developing your skills. Perfect. The same time, two days from now, then. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And don't get cocky. No trying to cast Fireball on your own. And... Dispel. <laughs> perfect. That was perfect. I can scarcely believe it. That was a flawless casting of Blur. I didn't want to say before fear of putting you off your game, but that's really advanced for someone whose first time using magic at all was just a couple of days ago. I didn't think you'd actually be able to do it. <laughs> Deadly serious. It's a bit of an abstraction from the way the weave truly works, but in academia we think of spells as having levels of difficulty. An increase in difficulty corresponds roughly to how many threads of the weave you'll need to manipulate to successfully cast the spell. Blur, which you cast so perfectly on your first try, is a level 2 spell. I know 2 doesn't sound like a particularly high number, but trust me, it's very impressive for a novice like yourself. Most students would be practicing for weeks or months before they could hope to progress past cantrips, let alone level 1. This is really, truly impressive. You, and know that I don't say this lightly, you may even be giving me a run for my money in terms of your early ability. And I got a start at a much earlier age when gaining an intuition for magic is much easier. Hmm, it seems to come so naturally to you. Yet I can tell that you don't take it for granted. Despite showing such natural aptitude, you're still eager to learn. For an enthusiast of the arcane, it's a wonderful thing to behold. Oh, absolutely. I'm having a wonderful time. I'm so glad that I suggested we reconvene today instead of waiting. Now, what's next? Let's see. I wonder if you couldn't manage... It's what? 8pm? Bloody hell. I should have been home three hours ago. I can't believe the time has gone by so quickly. Right. Well then, I'm afraid I'll have to be off. I'm sure Tara's already angry enough at me for having been gone for so much longer than I said I'd be, although she seemed to notice I was a little more eager to depart than I normally would have been, so perhaps she'll understand. Tara, yes. Did I not mention her already? Well, there you go, now I have. And she'll be waiting for me at home, so I should probably depart. 
I suppose we should probably give it a rest after today rather than carrying on tomorrow as much as I'd love to. Don't want to exhaust you. I'm sure after all of this you must be quite tired, and a sleepy spellcaster is a dangerous spellcaster. Indeed. So, I suppose, next ten day, as originally planned? Unless... well... hmm... I was just thinking... This ninth day I'll be in town doing a little shopping. Unusual for me. Normally I have some help go out and fetch the things I need, or otherwise have them delivered. But there are some particular materials I'm after that I'd like to be able to examine myself before purchasing them. I don't suppose, while I'm in town, you might like to come and meet me? No, no, not for more practice. No, I thought maybe you'd benefit from seeing how a more experienced spellcaster, such as myself, chooses their materials, that kind of thing. The quality can really make a difference for more complex spells. You have to know what to look for, what questions to ask, that sort of thing. It's tricky, and I thought I could show you the ropes, perhaps. Excellent. I'm so glad you said yes. It's not something I've ever had a reason to do before, but I'm quite looking forward to it. Shall I meet you in the square, by that statue of Zeremiah Elton? No, I barely know who he is either. It's the one with the continual flame burning around his right hand, if you... Ha! <laughs> I thought you might have noticed that. Yes, it's a well-cast continual flame, that's for sure. Always catches my eye. Whichever caster produced it isn't credited on the plaque, of course. They never are. The sculptor of the statue gets a credit, but the skilled spellsmith that put a cap on the whole thing... No. Anyway, if that sounds good to you, shall we say we'll meet there at noon? Splendid. Well then, I very much look forward to seeing you there. Do keep practicing. Keep your caster's eye in.